One of my favorite elements of Universal Parks is that it often seems as if there's entertainment and streamosphere pretty much everywhere you look. This includes frequent designated characters for certain areas, and a pretty significant number of outdoor shows as well. However, it often feels like Universal just finds people and throws costumes on them, asking them to essentially improvise when interacting with park guests. At least, that's the impression I get from some of the interactions I've seen, and it makes for some truly fantastic and funny entertainment. However, where Universal really shines in this area is with the multiple events that they host throughout the year at Universal Studios Florida. Obviously, Halloween Horror Nights is going to be their largest and most significant, and you're going to get a lot of really great interactions with scare actors throughout the various scare zones. However, Universal's Christmas entertainment has really been coming into its own over the last few years, with their Christmas parade being pretty decent and lining the park streets with entertainment throughout the day, including both characters and parade performers before the parade actually begins. With the parade performers specifically, they seem inescapable in the front half of the park, and add a lot to the festive atmosphere during this time of the year. However, another seasonal standout is Universal Mardi Gras, which takes place every spring. Not only are the streets filled with entertainers before the parade starts, but the park also includes decorations, food booths, and concerts on weekends with some pretty prolific artists. It's an incredibly popular event that's also included with park admission, and is itself a staple of the park's culture. However, while Halloween and Christmas events are pretty common throughout theme parks in the United States, I have to ask, why does Universal host Mardi Gras, emulating a specific New Orleans interpretation of the holiday? Despite its popularity, it's a bit of an odd choice for a seasonal event, so I thought this video would be an interesting opportunity to learn a bit about the celebration, discuss its history within the park, and take a look at the last few Mardi Gras tribute stores, which are interesting attractions in and of themselves. Despite being a high-profile cultural celebration within New Orleans, I do get the impression that very few people really understand what the holiday actually is, or where it originated, which actually included myself until writing this video. The holiday has its origins in the Roman festivals of Saturnalia and Lupercalia, which were later adopted by Christianity as it spread throughout Europe. Its adoption is partially a response to the 40 days of fasting and abstinence practiced during Lent, designating a period of partying and indulgence with massive carnival celebrations that begin a week before. The most prolific of these obviously include the carnival celebration in New Orleans, but also the festivals in Rio and Venice as well. For many people, the period of feasting begins on January 6th with the Epiphany, a Christian holiday that celebrates the baptism of Jesus and ends on Mardi Gras itself. The term Mardi Gras is simply French for Fat Tuesday, signifying the last day of excess before Lent begins with Ash Wednesday. Naturally, as the French traveled into North America, they would bring their traditions with them, and the French-Canadian explorer Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne, Sierra de Bienville, would travel to what is now Louisiana and Alabama, actually founding the forts that would become the city of Mobile in 1702. The following year, the first recorded celebration of Mardi Gras in North America took place there, and the celebration would continue to evolve throughout the centuries. However, New Orleans was also founded by Bienville in 1718, and would obviously see its share of Mardi Gras celebration as well, with society balls being established in the 1740s. However, with the Spanish taking control of New Orleans in 1763, and then the United States acquiring it in 1803 with the Louisiana Purchase, Mardi Gras would be suppressed as a cultural tradition. Despite this, the city was allowed to host its first recorded parade in 1837. However, in 1857, the mystic crew of Comus was founded by six anonymous men, who named themselves after John Milton's interpretation of the Greek character. They would put on a themed parade with floats and actors that portrayed Milton's poem, Paradise Lost, 
and in 1870, another crew, the Twelfth Night Revelers, was founded, introducing the idea of throwing stamped coins down to the crowds below. Two years later, another crew was founded, Rex, which is Latin for king, it was intended to honor the visiting Russian Duke, Alexei Romanov, also officially adopting the Romanov family colors of purple, green, and gold, which would become standard for subsequent carnival celebrations. The New Orleans Carnival would continue to evolve with elaborate paper mache floats and parades into what it is today, and would capture the interests of tourists throughout the United States, growing into an absolutely massive event. So, the tradition is clearly something that has become a distinct cultural expression of New Orleans. Why, then, is it hosted as a hugely popular seasonal event at Universal? Just a quick favor, but if you made it this far into the video, you can hit the like button to help boost it into the YouTube algorithm. While many carnival events are hosted throughout the United States in a similar fashion to New Orleans, Louisiana does take Mardi Gras a bit more seriously. Fat Tuesday is actually a state holiday, and in the weeks leading up to Mardi Gras itself, many schools are off, and so many people travel out of New Orleans and Louisiana. One of the most popular destinations during this week is of course Orlando and Walt Disney World, and so naturally, Disney would begin to cater to those travelers during this time especially since this was a welcome boon in attendance during what used to be a quieter off-season. Noting the significance of the crowds from Louisiana, Disney would open the Port Orleans Resort in 1991, designed to emulate the architecture of the city and throwing in a lot of iconography based around Mardi Gras. In 1992, its connected sister resort would open, Disney's Dixie Landings, which would choose a more generic southern theme. However, in 2001, the resort was renamed to Port Orleans Riverside, and the previous Port Orleans added French Quarter to its name to differentiate the two. Alongside the opening of the original Port Orleans, Disney would also begin hosting Mardi Gras on Pleasure Island, the nightclub district of downtown Disney. The events would run from 1991 through 2007, it would last usually around five nights, bringing in real New Orleans crews and hosting parades that traveled throughout the district. In addition, live bands would play jazz and zydeco, and special food offerings from Cajun and Creole cuisine could be found. An interesting side note, but it appears that at one point, there was even a show themed around Carnival from the Hunchback of Notre Dame, though I'm not sure when it started or how long it lasted. However, the event was clearly popular in its early years, and Disney building an entire resort to cater to Louisiana travelers is a testament to how many people traveled there. Wanting to capture some of this audience for themselves, the still relatively new Universal Studios Florida would host their own Mardi Gras event starting in 1995. What's remarkable about this is that it was much larger in scale than what Disney was offering. The events lasted for an entire month and included 15 massive floats, all built by Kern Studios. Kern Studios themselves have a pretty large part to play in the development of Carnival in New Orleans having built floats since 1947, and becoming one of the largest and most prolific studios. They've actually been so successful that they've branched out into fabricating props and interiors for theme parks, cruise ships, and retail, but of course, their specialty is parade floats. So when Universal premiered an elaborate parade with floats built by Kern Studios, you know that they were really going all out. Since that point, the event has only continued to grow in popularity, offering newly built floats and themes each year. For example, this year's theme is Mythical Realms of Mardi Gras, featuring floats that depict mythological creatures from around the world. While the theme and most of the floats do change every year, some are recycled as staples of every parade, including the massive Rex Gator tandem float that always trails at the end. While traditionally, Universal Mardi Gras has hosted food booths throughout the park that serve New Orleans carnival offerings such as beignets, king cake, and gator bites, they did experiment with an international booth in 2020. However, in 2021, with the era of mask wearing and social distancing, and therefore a modified version of the events without a parade, Universal did expand into an almost fully-fledged food festival, offering different dishes from around the world, which it still continues to do today. 
with all the food, concerts, park decorations, streetmosphere performers, and finally the excellent parade, Mardi Gras definitely adds a lot to the park with the festive carnival atmosphere that it creates. However, as with Halloween and Christmas, Mardi Gras also offers its own version of the Tribute Store, a highly themed retail space that has become a seasonal attraction itself. While I've spoken at length about the history of the Tribute Store in another video, and have managed to highlight some of the subsequent stores in other videos since, I haven't really had the opportunity to speak about its previous Mardi Gras iterations. These stores themselves are really quite interesting, so let's quickly pivot to that now. The first iteration of the Mardi Gras Tribute Store premiered in 2020, working off of the success of the Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store, which was continuing to grow in popularity. This first version of the Mardi Gras Store was intended to celebrate 25 years of Mardi Gras at Universal, and was for the most part themed to a New Orleans graveyard and swamp. However, due to the park shutting down a few months later, this store was short-lived. In 2021, with the modified version of Mardi Gras, the return of the Tribute Store was a nice surprise. I've already discussed this version at length in my Tribute Store video, so I'm only going to quickly run through it here. The first room was themed to a jazz club designed with a Creole interior. The second room was once again themed to a graveyard, which I assume was meant as a continuation of the previous store that never received a full run before the parks shut down. The third room was then themed to pirates, and the last room was designed to emulate a shipwreck in a bayou. In my opinion, this was probably the best and most atmospheric version of the Mardi Gras Tribute Store, but I won't go into more detail because, again, I've already done so in another video. However, as the store has continued to evolve, new and interesting ideas have gone into it. The 2022 version of the store begins with a facade of a float factory, and chronicles the process of developing and building Mardi Gras floats throughout each room. As you first enter, the entry vestibule shows plans for Mardi Gras facades, and as you move into the first room, it's designed to look like a warehouse, full of props and decorated with blueprints. These plans reveal the early stages of designing the skeleton for a float, and other material also works as a meta easter egg, showing blueprints of other tribute store facades. As you move on, the next room is themed to the fabrication stage of the float. You can see more plans, as well as bins full of decorations that will be used to decorate it once it's finished. Here, you can also see plywood cutouts that will begin to shape the float as it comes together. There is also a small model of a gator head, teasing that this float will likely be themed to an alligator. Moving through a hallway into the next room, here you will find more props, fabricated pieces, and for the most part, costumes for the performers on the float. Like the previous rooms, you'll find easter eggs alluding to Mardi Gras events in the past, including some of the costumes which were recycled for this room. As you move into the checkout area, you see the finished float, themed to an alligator in a spacesuit, which reflected the 2022 theme of space. It's also clever how the shelves and food counters are themed to floats as well. As you proceed out of the store, the exit hallway will feature more conceptual drawings of floats, and the exit vestibule has a small scene that I can only describe as being vaguely themed to jazz. While this version of the tribute store is pretty interesting, especially because it is littered with easter eggs, I do think that it's one of the weaker ones, not just in the context of Mardi Gras, but in comparison to other themes as well. While the warehouse theming inside does make sense with the clever story, it's just less visually interesting, especially compared to the more atmospheric 2021 version. Moving on to this year's tribute store, this is actually the first iteration that takes place in a new location. It was moved out of the extended queue for Revenge of the Mummy, and now instead takes up store space in the Hollywood section of the park. This is great! not only because it essentially adds a minor attraction to an area of the park that needed more to do, but now there's a lot more room to work with in this new building. As you enter, the first room is themed as the Ambassador Ballroom, which is pretty self-explanatory based on the name. 
You can hear lively jazz music playing in the background as you look up above and see the various posters, each representing a different version of Carnival depending on the country. All of the countries represented also have menu items at the food booths this year as well. As a themed event space, you'll also notice a setup for a jazz band overlooking the room, as well as a piano sitting in the corner. Moving forward, the next room is themed to an alleyway as you move out of the ballroom. The brick facades are covered in jazz posters, and Mardi Gras props and instruments are littered throughout. Finally, the alleyway leads into a speakeasy known as the Brass and Brimstone, placing the time period of the tribute store as sometime in the 1920s. Here, you'll see what you would expect to see in an establishment like this, before then turning into a hotel lobby, which works to hide the speakeasy. While this new location does have one room less than previous tribute stores, it does allow for the bills to feel larger in scale, in these more open spaces. While this particular Mardi Gras tribute store isn't very strong in comparison to other themes, it is still a great first attempt at using this new space, and I like how there's a consistent connection between the rooms, even if there's no progressing story like with the Floatworks factory. The different themed tribute stores have become fun attractions in association with events hosted every year, and have been important components of those experiences. The Mardi Gras tribute stores are no different, and so that's why I thought it would be interesting to discuss them in their own portion of the video. Universal Mardi Gras, which oddly enough isn't very well documented online for how popular the event continues to be, is certainly a welcome highlight of the park every year. You're going to get an ever-growing variety of food booths, in addition to the multiple concerts hosted over the course of its run. The additions of carnival decorations and live entertainments that can be found pretty much everywhere you turn completely changes the atmosphere of the park for the better. Finally, the elaborate parade that debuts a new theme and fleet of new floats is something that must cost Universal a ton of money every single year. Yet this and all the other entertainment is included free with regular park admission. Universal Mardi Gras is just a good time as a high quality event, one that brings a party atmosphere to the park, which I also hope will continue adding new offerings in the coming years as well. While Carnival in New Orleans is its own distinct cultural tradition, it is interesting to see how it was introduced to Universal, becoming its own distinct form of cultural expression that has become an entertainment staple of the park's culture. If you were not aware of what Mardi Gras was, whether outside or inside Universal's park gates, hopefully this video was able to shed a little more light on one of the park's more interesting traditions. As always, if you made it this far into the video, you can help it reach a wider audience by simply hitting the like button. If you have not yet subscribed and hit the bell icon, you can also do so to be notified to new videos as they release.